Hi, welcome to episode 70 of you enjoyed that i've been filming this uh, podcast episode on and off for a couple of weeks i've been finding it hard to get a stretch of time where i can just sit down and get it done and i can't find my little clip on lapel microphone so i hope the sound is okay and um, if i'm a bit quiet just whack the volume up on your phone anyway hello and welcome um, my name is Zoe. You can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Pins and Needles UK. I am also one half of Cartrev Yarn and one half of the Knit Tea Retreat, along with my friend Jenny, who is at Owl About Yarn. And yeah, welcome. I've had a bit of a bump in subscriber numbers recently, so welcome if this is your first or second um, bit of time with me, and welcome back to all my regulars. Um, I didn't mean for it to be a whole month since my last podcast, but um, I think all of us are struggling with time management and what days even mean anymore. But I have made it and with a bit of luck, I'll be able to stitch all the different bits and pieces I've been filming and it will seem like a coherent whole, at least from your side. Um, I also forgot to say, check the drop down box underneath this video for details of the show notes. Um, I've got links to the Cartred website, the Knit Tea Retreat website, my coffee account where you can support this podcast if you'd like to, and all the details of everything that I talk about today. I'll try and remember to put timestamps in as well so that if you want to skip to a particular bit, you absolutely can do. I have a cup of tea today in my fabulous yarn and yarn mugs, um, but it's decaf, which I'm not sure how I feel about, to be honest. It's still Yorkshire tea, but um, I've been struggling to um, sleep properly this last couple of months, so I'd stopped drinking tea after lunchtime which I think has been helping a bit, although not much, but I really miss drinking tea. So I thought I was in the supermarket today. I picked up some Yorkshire tea decaf and it's fine. It's not as good as the normal stuff, but it's better than no tea at all. Okay, I'm going to add in one of my um, earlier film snippets <laughs> to kick off the finished object section. And here you go. I've got two proper fully finished objects to show you and I am heading off to give one of them to their intended recipient as soon as I finished recording this. I've had some technical issues this morning um, but I won. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, so um, I might have mentioned on previous episodes that I've been taking part in a secret sock swap amongst a group of friends and um, we all pulled names out of a hat and had to knit socks for the person that we drew. And um, I made a slight error in that I thought I was knitting socks for Jeanette. And so I found some beautiful yarn and a really nice pattern that I thought would be fab for her. And I cast them on, ooh, between Christmas and New Year, I think knitted them up, gorgeous, loved them, really happy with them. And then Jeanette posted in our friend's WhatsApp group, 
oh my goodness, my gorgeous socks have just arrived and somebody else was knitting socks for Jeanette <laughs> and they were beautiful. Um, so then I had this pair of socks that I'd finished with Jeanette and I tried to work out who else I was supposed to have been knitting socks for all along and then had to knit a second pair because um, Jeanette works for the NHS and is an all round fabulous person and she deserved the socks I knit for her. Um, and the person I should have been knitting socks for also deserved a really nice thoughtful pair of socks. So I didn't want to just alter the ones I'd made for Jeanette and give them to the person I should have been knitting for, who is Ange of the Yarn and Yarns podcast. So the long and short of it is, I've knit two pairs of secret socks. So I'm gonna quickly show you um, the socks. So this is the pair that I knit for Angela. And I hope you can see that. It's a, sorry, I've got my silly Ikea lamp right in the way and I keep biffing it. There we go. Um, so these are the socks I knit for Angela and it's called Into the Woods. And I can't remember the designer, but it'll be in the drop down box below. And it's a similar stitch pattern, if you remember, to my Constellate hat that I finished not so long ago. So it's a stocking stitch background. And um, I, again, I can't give it away because it's a paid for pattern. Um, but you create these sort of loops of pulled through stitches to make these little trees. So it's a top down heel flap and gusset pattern. Um, in this beautiful, slightly tweedy yarn. And uh, with a bit of luck. Yes. So this was some yarn that I got sent from Knit Crate and it's their Uru Yarn Unicorn Sock in the colourway Hot Cocoa. Um, so it's a Merino Donegal Nep and Nylon blend. And um, and loves nature and heading out walking and things like that. So I thought the stitch pattern would really suit her and um, the color of the yarn I thought goes well with trees. So I really enjoyed knitting those. Um, and yeah, I'm heading off to see Ange. I've got some work related stuff that we need to swap with each other. Um, and you are allowed now to go for a, an exercise session with one other person. So I thought we could have a walk. So yeah, so those are the socks for Angela. These are the ones that I should have knitted first. <laughs> um, it was a really well written pattern. I zoomed through one sock, no problem. And then I pushed on through the second. And when I'd kitchened the toe of the second socks, you know how you kind of smooth them out on your lap and you're like, oh, let's admire my gorgeous knitting. That was the point at which I realized I'd done one less repeat on the foot of the second sock than I had in the first. So I had to pick out my kitchener, rip back the toe, <laughs> Knit one more repeat, but now they are finished and perfect. Um, and Angela will be pleased because she has two feet that are the same size. So that's encouraging. But the yarn was nice to work with. It did feel a little bit, a little bit cottony. There wasn't quite as much stretch and bounce in it as I'm used to. And I don't know why that is because it's merino, nylon and Donegal net. So there's nothing cottony in it um, and I've got a little leftover skein which I thought I would give to Angela as well just in case she needs to darn it or if I randomly made them the wrong size um, and if she doesn't need them she can just make them into gnomes. So those are Angela's. Talk amongst yourselves while I put Jeanette's socks on these here blockers. And here are socks for Jeanette. Now this is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears and I want to say it's snow forest socks, forest path socks, can't quite remember. Um, but it's, it's a lovely pattern. It's mostly stocking stitch apart from this panel of lace down the side. And I don't know if you can see, but either side of the lace panel, there's some twisted stitches. They're not true cables, they're just twisted stitches. Um, and as well as them just being a really pretty pair of socks, um, 
Kay's pattern has a rounded toe and a rounded heel. So if you can see, the decreases in the toe are similar to a hat. So rather than decreasing um, to form a wedge toe, sort of only along these lines here, with this, you decrease in concentric circles. And it's similar for the heel as well. So I will be interested to see if Jeanette likes the fit of these. Um, it's an afterthought heel. And in the pattern, she has you knit the whole sock and the toe and then go back to cut in the heel. I don't like doing that because I don't feel it gives me an accurate measurement for the length of the foot. So I knitted the leg, put in a couple of rows of waist yarn, knitted two or three pattern repeats of the foot. Then I went back and put the heel in. And then I was happy that I could get an accurate measurement from that part of the heel all the way to the end of the toe to get the length right. Um, and I went for a contrast just because I thought it looked pretty. Um, yeah, so this was the first pair of socks I knitted, thinking that Jeanette was the name I pulled out of the hat. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and this yarn is gorgeous. This is um, a leftover mini from, oh, one of my pattern designs. It was the Party Bunting socks. Um, and this was the colourway for the bunting ribbon at the top of the socks. And then this ball of gorgeousness was a skein of yarn I bought on impulse at 2am <laughs> from the lovely people at Attic Spin Dye. And I heard about them through Angela's podcast and they have a lovely Etsy shop. And this was the colourway Peach Sorbet Sprinkles and it's a 7525 Merino Nylon. And it just perfectly matched that little mini and just made just such a sweet little pair of socks. And I know socks go on your feet, but um, Jeanette has lovely dark hair, so it can, you know, looks really nice with sort of pastel colours. So that's why I thought they'd suit her. So there we go. Two pairs of finished socks, both of them knitted. Um, well, yeah, each one only, each pair only took me about two weeks, but... Like I said, there is that small error. So I will make sure that Jeanette has some spare yarn as well, again, just for the darning process. Um, and now I'm going to go and wrap up Angela's socks, leap in my car and go and give them to her. Those socks are now with their recipients, with Ange and with Jeanette, and they both assure me that they fit beautifully. Um, I do have some other finished objects to share with you. You can probably see them in a heap next to me here. I'm going to start with my latest pattern. Um, so every time Jenny and I organise and run a knit tea retreat, um, there's always a gift bag. And February's knit tea retreat was Nordic themed. Um, and the gift bag was an optional extra that you could choose to include or not. And I designed the pattern for it. Jenny and I um, take it in turns to design patterns and it was my turn and I needed a new tea cosy. <laughs> so I shamelessly shoehorned my own needs and wants into the retreat. And um, yeah, here is my Nordic tea cosy and I'm really pleased with it. And um, this tea cosy is not exactly as the pattern is because I made a few changes as I went along um, it's a steeked pattern, so you've got one steek here and one steek there for the spout. Um, and they were a little larger than I needed them. So the written pattern, um, the steek starts a little further up. It starts after the red section here and finishes before the red section there. Um, but that's something that you can adjust in the pattern anyway because of the different heights of people's handles and spouts for their teapots. Anyway, the point is, this is my Nordic Tea Cozy design. Um, it's available now from my Payhip store and also from my Ravelry store. And there are links to both of those places down below. And I'm really pleased with it. I used our yarn, Cartrev yarn. Here's our label from Farm to Yarn in Wales. So this is the yarn company that Jenny and I run. And... Um, we source the fleece from our Welsh wool depot. We have it spun up in Ceredigion 
and then we dye it ourselves. So the first time it leaves Wales is when we put it into the postal system to be delivered. Um, and I chose the DK for this pattern. The main colour, the blue, is sapphire. Then the first contrast colour, which is this creamy coloured here on the corrugated ribbing and the motif and the decreases at the top. Um, that is natural, which just means natural. So this is our undyed and it's a it's oatmeal-y colour. And then the red here for the zigzags is called drag and that of course means dragon. So we've got sapphire, sapphire, natural, natural and drag for dragon. And I was particularly pleased with the decreases on the top. Um, it makes this rather charming pattern and uh, yeah. As I said, it's a steeped pattern um, and I do include links in the pattern to a good tutorial to do that. Not by me, it's Kate Davis Designs tutorial. Um, and I arranged a column of the steep stitches either side to form this deliberately tidy, colourful edge um, so that you had like a nice lining to the steak opening. Um, yeah, so that's now available to buy. Um, if any of you are subscribed to my newsletter and you missed it, I did send you an email with a discount code. And if any, any retreat attendees are watching, you should have had an email with a PDF of this attached and also a download code for Ravelry or Payhip, which would give it to you for free, just in case you wanted a backup copy. So yes, I've been knitting away on this for quite a while and I'm very pleased with it. And now that I've shown you, I can put it on my teapot. <laughs> I've got um, a Kate Davis cozy on my teapot. It's the chic carousel pattern, if anyone knows that. And it's looking rather the worse for wear. So it would be nice to have a fresh cozy in a slightly darker background colour. Next up for finished objects is my finished adventuresome wrap. I've shown, uh, I showed this on my last podcast. I think I was sort of five or six minis away from finishing, but it is now complete. Haven't yet blocked it. Um, I kept, one of the reasons I kept putting recording this off is because I wanted to get this washed and blocked to show you it properly finished and I'm just, I'm making excuses. So, here it is in all its marvellousness. This is the Adventuresome Wrap by Amber O'Brien. You knit it bottom up and there are increases and decreases built into the pattern to give it this wedge shape. And it has a nice lace work pattern to each section. Um, and I've absolutely loved loved knitting this um, I cast it on um, between Christmas and New Year I think um, and it, I, it's been absolutely a pleasure to, to knit I'm sort of sad it's over do you ever get that when you kind of don't want to finish a project because then it'll be over <laughs> but I think it's going to be worth it so the purple colour here um, was a present given to me by the lovely Louise, who is BFB. I don't think I've got the label with me, but uh, the details will be down below. Um, and I have about half the ball left. I have about an extra 50 grams left. Um, and yeah, I was a little concerned about using purple as the contrast. It works out absolutely fine. And the minis that I used to knit the stripes were in my friend's advent calendar swap. So I don't know what most of them are, um, but they're absolutely beautiful. So now I've shown you guys, I can um, give it a soak and pin it out on my dining room table. And hopefully I'll get some modeled shots for you next time. I did want a bit of extra length um, just so that it's got a bit more flingability. It will stretch out as I block it um, quite a bit widthways, 
and quite a bit lengthways as well because it's um, got that lace pattern in it. And I knitted it on 3.25 needles, I think. So yeah, I'm pleased to have finished it and a little bit sad that it's over, but it was a really enjoyable knit. Um, moving on to works in progress, um, as well as the tea cozy that I showed you just now, um, I wanted to knit a hat version of the same pattern. Not everybody needs a tea cozy, although you do really need a tea cozy because you should have a teapot. Just saying. Um, but yes, it was just such a nice, quick and easy knit. And I thought perhaps a hat pattern might be a bit more useful in general. So my work in progress is the adapted Nordic cozy hat. <laughs> I haven't got terribly far. I only started this the day before yesterday. So I've got the corrugated ribbing and I've just done the first row of the colour work. Uh, I'm using the same colours. Um, I'm doing this on a, oh, lost a stitch. I'm doing this on a 16 inch fixed Knit Pro Nova circular needle. Um, and I'm keeping it in my little Cartrovian drawstring bag. We bought these for the Christmas surprise boxes we sent out and I've snaffled one. Um, so yeah, that's that's trundling along nicely. I did have to alter the chart pattern. Obviously the tea cozy was one size, but for the hat pattern, I want an adult small, medium and large, which I think will be 20 inches, 22 inches and 24 inches. Um, and it just meant that I had to alter the um, colour work chart. I couldn't just straight copy it across to the new pattern. Um, so I've been beavering away on my laptop, altering that. Um, and yeah, it's pretty quick knit. So hopefully I'll have it finished for you by the next time we speak. Um, and anybody that has already got the tea cozy pattern, I will add the hat pattern version as an update to it, so you won't need to buy it again. Obviously the yarn quantities will be a bit different, um, but I don't know those yet because I haven't finished knitting it. So yeah, that's my, that's my work knitting. My last work in progress is really only just about qualifies as a work in progress. I treated myself to a copy of this book, which is Shetland by Marie Wallin. Um, I don't normally buy pattern books, um, they're quite expensive and I usually only want to knit one or two patterns from any particular book so I just buy the single patterns when they become available. But I want to knit pretty much everything in this book so I bought the whole thing. Um, it's a beautiful book, stunning photography, gorgeous patterns and I've um, decided to knit the Yell cardigan. And I've been looking forward to making this for years, but I've only recently bought the book and the yarn. And I really wanted to enjoy starting the project. So I took some time out of my day to start winding up the yarns and things like that. And I recorded some of it to share with you.
So here's a quick close up of the pattern. That's the cardigan that I want to make. I couldn't get the exact colours for some of the colour work down the bottom, so I've substituted them with similar ones, but that's absolutely fine. Um, and there's a lot of them. I think I have 11 different colours. So I've dug out my, <laughs> my bag that Jeanette bought me when we all went away. And I knitted up a small, teeny tiny swatch. Um, this is um, Shayla and Sholmet. Um, and you use these for the um, upper part of the body and sleeves. And the pattern recommends 3.25 mil needles, which is what I knit this swatch on. And it, it's not my finest work because my hands were pretty painful at the time. So tensioning the yarn was sore, so it was a bit stop start. But I got my tension spot on first time. These are two different shades of grey and they're showing up differently quite nicely on the camera. Um, it is perhaps a little bit harder to see in person, but I've only done quite a small tension square or tension tube rather because I did it in the round. And I think once you've got the whole entirety of the garment, it'll show up more easily. So you can see my steak stitches down the side there and you've got a sort of a, a lozenge and then a... I don't know what that is, like almost like a cross. And the yarn is beautifully light, very warm, very gorgeous. Because I wanted to do a small tension tube, I knit on DPNs to do that. I will use one long, excuse me. I will use one long fixed circular for the body. Um, it is a steeped pattern. But I thought it worth mentioning the needles. These are Brittany birch needles. They're quite rounded tips and they're fairly grabby, fairly sticky, um, which is usually everything I hate in a needle. <laughs> I like metal um, and I like a reasonable point. But actually for colour work knitting, do consider playing around with your needle choice because one great advantage of using a grabbier sort of needle is that when you are trying to keep an even tension on your stitches, I sort of knit a few stitches and then I smooth the completed stitches along my needle. And with a grabbier one, they stay put, they stay smoothed out and it just makes sure that you keep your floats nice and loose and you don't get that puckering. When I move on to the, my metal fixed circulars, I like higher, higher steels because they've got a swivelly, where they attach, the cord attaches to the needle, it swivels, which I absolutely love. Um, so I won't have that advantage on my metal needles, but my tension is even enough with colour work, it's not a problem. But if you are new to colour work, or if you struggle with puckering, then do consider a wooden or birch or bamboo needle, something with a bit more stick on it than metal ones. I showed in the video that I made myself these little <laughs> these little tags with all the different yarns on the sides because I live in fear of using the wrong one so I thought a quick reference is probably sensible. Um, I'm making this with the recommended yarn in the pattern which is Jameson's Shetland Spindrift and you get 25 grams in a ball which gives you approximately 105 meters. And I bought the majority of the contrast colours from the Jameson's website, but I couldn't quite get them all of them. So I found the rest at You and Ply, which is a local yarn shop based in Oswestry in Wales, which is nice. Obviously, they're closed at the moment because of COVID, um, but they do have a really good website and fabulous customer service. So if you're on the hunt for some Jameson's, do consider You and Ply. And then tucked in here are all my colours ready to go. And I've got two layers of them. So if I take out these four and that one, there's the next layer of colours. Oh, what beautiful. And the really wonderful thing about Jameson's is that quite a lot of their colours are a blend of different colours. So this is green, 
that's blue and that's yellow. But if you take a close up look at the fibres in the balls, you can see that there's touches of the blue in the yellow, there's touches of red in the blue, and there's touches of yellow in the green. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So um, I'm ready to go with this project. All my yarn is wound up. I'm knitting, it comes in three sizes. It's an oversized open fronted cardigan. So, you know, you don't need to worry too much about stitches per inch. And I'm knitting the middle size. I think that might be the large to extra large. Um, and I've decided that once I've knit the central colorwork section of the Nordic cozy hat, I'm allowed to start this, so hopefully tomorrow. And then on to spinning, I think. I had quite a big spinning section in my last um, podcast because I decided to take part in Fluff to Stuff, which is a year-long spin and make-along run between Mina, who is Knitting Expat, Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns and Mars from Hay Brownberry. And I actually attended, they have a monthly Zoom get together, for want of a better word, and um, I bought tickets to the February one, um, which I really enjoyed actually. I wasn't sure how quickly the tickets went. I didn't find out about the January Zoom until after it had happened, so I couldn't have got tickets for that. And the tickets for this one went on sale at 5 a.m. our time, which I think was a sensible time for Mars over in the States. So I set my alarm for 10 to 5 in the morning, <laughs> which isn't that much earlier than I usually wake up. Um, but I woke up and grabbed me a ticket and grabbed Jenny a ticket and we had a really nice time. And as well as just seeing lots of familiar faces and friends and making some new ones, I came across a new, um, new to me, she's not new, she's been doing this for years, um, lady called, oh, I want to say Rachel. And she is wool and spinning, I think, on YouTube. I'll try and remember to put it on the screen and I'll definitely link it in the show notes. And she seems like a really lovely lady, incredibly knowledgeable, does a lot of online teaching. Um, so I've been enjoying diving into her podcasts. Um, and I also investigated her Patreon um, where you can get access to lots more teaching and things like that. So I'll link her down below. Um, but that was one really nice thing I took away from the live Zooms. Anyway, I have finished my first fluff to stuff spin. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, I've ended up with a lot of single breed undyed fibre and my plan is to spin them all up into a two ply DK weight yarn and then knit myself blanket squares. Still haven't decided on the pattern, um, but I've narrowed it down to a couple um, and I thought that might be quite nice because I can feel like I've got a whole finished object when I've knit my way through 100 grams of hand spun. I don't need to spin a huge amount to get my finished object in a way. Does that make sense? So the first one I went for was Jacob. Now Jacob are um, a multicoloured fleece sheep um, and some people divide the fibre into different colours. I just spun them as they came um, and I've only got normal size bobbins on my Ashra traditional. So I split the fiber into two lots of 50 grams and then sp split those again into 25 grams. And I've ended up with two lovely skeins. I've just realized the sun's coming out and it's shining right on my glasses. I'll just nip and close the curtains. There we go, I think that's a bit better. So as you can see, the skein has a very slight twist in it, which is just about perfect. I haven't washed these. Um, I'm confident it, it came out to a proper DK weight because I used my spinner's control card, which I got from Hilltop Cloud. This is some commercial DK weight yarn that I attached to it just to give me a guide. And I was constantly comparing my spun singles and then applied yarn um, against this and I was aiming for the 14 wraps per inch at the bottom. So here we have 
the yarn. And I'm really rather pleased with it. Is that going to focus? There we go. So when I was spinning up the singles, and then plying them together, the different um, colours of the fibre were giving me some bits that were coming out grey, others were definitely cream, others were brown, and then when I plied it all together, of course, they all mixed up, and I've ended up overall with this beautiful grey-brown yarn that I'm really pleased with. Um, so yeah, I, something else I need to do when I block my wrap is get these in the bucket and I'm interested to see how much they puff up but overall I think I did a pretty consistent job um, yeah that's probably a good section to examine a little closer and I don't think that's too bad given that I haven't done a huge amount of spinning and by the time I've knitted it into a blanket square with lace in it you're not going to see anything I really enjoyed spinning Jacob. It's definitely, it feels slightly hairier perhaps than a lot of the other standard fibres that hand spinners use. Um, but really, really good fun. I enjoyed it very much. And I have got my next spin out. I dug that out just this morning actually. Um, I don't know why, but my arthritis has been playing up recently. I have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, that's pretty well controlled by medication um, but I've only had it probably 18 months so I suppose I'm still getting in the swing of things and for some reason my hands have been very sore and swollen and um, pinching and twisting and pulling motions are quite painful so I've been I finished that spin first week of February and I've not got back to my wheel yet but my hands don't seem to be improving, so I thought I might as well just get on with it. Where did I put... I thought I'd brought the label. I didn't bring the label. My next spin is going to be some undyed Wensleydale. Now, Wensleydale is a long staple fibre. If you look at its sheep, it has really long locks, anywhere from 8 to 12 inches, and they have a nice curl to them. Um, and I've got 100 grams of undyed Wensleydale which I picked up from Adelaide Walker at Wonderful Wales several years ago and um, again I divided it in the same way and I had to pull one extra bit off because I hadn't done it quite precisely um, and it's going to be interesting to see how I get on with spinning this because of the extra long staple length so when you're spinning and drafting the far fibre so you're sort of pulling it out like this. You need to have your hands further apart than the length of the fibre. So if, for example, the fibre is three inches long and your hands are two and a half inches apart, you can't pull the fibre apart, fibre apart because your hands are closer than the length of the individual fibres. And obviously with longer staple fibres, your hands need to be further apart again. So if I just tease this out, gosh, look at that. Look how long that is. That's a slightly longer than the length of my hand, I'd say. Now, obviously, the fibres don't all start here and they don't all stop down there. There will be a little bit of overlap. But even so, yeah, I think that's what we're looking at. I've got actually my... Six. We're probably talking eight inches, and that's longer than I've spun before. So I'm. I'll do some pre-drafting because that makes things much easier on my hands, um, and I'll crack on with that. And one of the characteristics of longer staple fibres is that they have this beautiful sheen to them, um, sort of similar in a way to silk. And you don't want to put too much twist into this. Um, so that you don't lose that shine. You want long, smooth surfaces so that the light can really bounce off it. So that's going to be a challenge, I think, but one that I'm looking forward to.
for acquisitions, obviously there was the Shetland book, which I bought directly from Marie Wallen's website. Um, I haven't bought any yarn or anything, but I did buy an awful lot of fibre from John Arben. <laughs> I was cross that I couldn't spin because my hands were sore. So I decided that buying fibre was kind of the same. It's not the same. So I bought 200 grams of, no, I didn't. I bought 500 grams <laughs> of their Yarnadelic top, which is 100% Falklands Corridale. And it's in the colourway Black Gold of the Sun. Now I'm a mill member of John Arben, so you can sign up to be a mill member. You pay, I can't remember how much you pay, but they send you some lovely goodies and you get a permanent discount on their stuff. And I, I was watching Lynn of Callon Yarns podcast, who I know slightly from back in the day. She's another Cardiff based spinner and she had some of this and I fell in love with it. So this is a sweater's quantity of fiber. And in the same way I was showing you the different colors in the Jameson's yarn, look at all the different colors in this. That's coming up pretty perfect actually. So you've got teals, you've got navy blues, you've got spring greens, you've got little bits of red, purpley red, and it's just the most beautiful, beautiful colour. I think I will probably spin this up to be four ply. It's like a person that you can hug. Um, because with five skeins, if I end up with five 100 gram skeins of fingering weight, that gives me an awful lot more options. I could spin it up as DK and perhaps do a, a shorter sleeved um, something, but I think probably four ply will be the most versatile. Um, and I've got, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I joined the Kickstarter for the electric e-wheel, electric, I always get this wrong, the electric eel wheel e-spinner, that was a mouthful. Um, he's launching a 6.0 version of his larger size electric spinning wheel. Uh, I think I ordered it. The Kickstarter ended back in June last year um, and I should be getting that hopefully April. So I think this perhaps might be the project that I put on that because it comes with much larger bobbins. You can get, I think, 200 grams onto one of his bobbins. So I'll be tucking this away for now. Um, but oh, it's gorgeous. And I do love Corridale. I haven't spun Corridale, but I have knitted with it. And they send it in these cornstarch bags. So they're completely compostable, which is nice. Oh, and you get a nice card that comes with it with a sheep on the front. Traditional British made yarn and tops from the heart of North Devon. And on the back it says, Dear Zoe, thank you for ordering our top. Please find it enclosed along with your receipt. How sweet. So thank you very much. I forgot to quickly talk about my Knit Crate subscription. Um, I'm part of the Knit Crate Ambassador Scheme, which means that they send me yarn for free once a month, although COVID is making the delivery a bit dodgy at the moment. Um, and I tell you what I think of it. Um, there's a link down below, it is an affiliate link. And if you sign up to their monthly subscription box using that link, you get a big discount on your first month um, and I get a tiny percentage. So, I can't even remember which month this was. This might have been the January month. I think it was. And they sent me this beautiful skein of Uru yarn in Twinkle Toes. And it's in the colourway Dawn. And it's 55% merino, 20% nylon, 15% kid mohair, and 10% stellina. Is the sparkle going to show? I think it will. Absolutely beautiful colour really nice and soft and should be fairly sturdy because it's got 20% nylon and 15% kid mohair absolutely perfect for socks and that's a pretty accurate colour um, it also came with a stress ball which was unexpected and a little bit 90s but you never know um, and as well as the yarn and some sort of extra goodie you always get a magazine with knit and crochet patterns in 
Um, you can choose when you sign up for the subscription whether you want a fingering weight skein of yarn or whether you want a heavier weight. But the patterns for all of the weights of yarn are in this booklet, which is really nice. And I think they were doing collaborations this whole year. Oh yes, and this month she was work they were working with Margaret Olander of Sheepishly Sharing, which makes me sound like um chap who played James Bond. Who is the chap? Sean Connery, that's who I'm thinking of. So those are the other yarns that were available this month, and I got this skein of Twinkle Toes. So as usual, um I don't usually keep these yarns. They kind of go into the prize pot for giveaways um, to do with the Knit Tea Retreat um, and things like that. So I will tuck this away. But thank you very much, Knit Crate. And as I said, if you're interested, there's an affiliate link down below that can get you a bit of a discount. All I've got left now is a bit of chat. And somewhat unsurprisingly, not an awful lot's been happening. <laughs> um, yeah, the kids have been doing homeschool and getting a bit fed up with it, to be honest. Um, the gym is still closed. We are all still at home all of the time. But it looks like we're starting to come the other side of it. I went for my COVID vaccination, my first dose, um, 14th or 15th of February. I'm classed as clinically vulnerable because the I'm on immunosuppressants for my arthritis. So I've had my first injection. Hopefully it won't be too long till I have my second. And the governments are just starting to talk about opening things back up. The youngest primary school children went back a couple of weeks ago. And we heard yesterday that my eldest, Conrad, um, will be going back full time from the 17th of March. He'll have two weeks back in school and then they break for two weeks for Easter, but he'll go back again full time after. Jocelyn, my middle child, she's 15, she will be going back for one day before Easter and Max, my youngest, he will also be going back for one day before Easter. They haven't said if they're going to be full time afterwards, but I hope so. Um, I told you about the Nordic retreat, that was really good fun. Thank you to everybody that attended um, and joined in with the marketplace and things like that. Um, we will be getting in touch with the June retreat attendees soon, this coming week, and we will be releasing tickets for the October retreat in Cardiff, workshop-based one, um, in the next month-ish. So if you want to be first to hear about all of those things, make sure you sign up to the retreat newsletter, which is linked down below. Um, we are hopeful that the October retreat can go ahead in person. Hopeful. And yeah, Cartrev Yarn has just been bumbling along. We um, sold lots of yarn in the retreat marketplace, which is nice. Lots of jumper quantities um, heading out into the world. And we're taking part in the virtual Yorkshire Yarn Fest, which is the weekend of the 27th of March. Um, and there'll be an Instagram live for that, which will be fun. And yeah, just busy, busy planning things. You can just see up there on my mantelpiece, I bought myself a webcam. Um, part of the Knit Tea Society, which is our Patreon group. Um, we do monthly podcasts with Jenny and I, and we do monthly live Zoom socials. And my laptop camera is really, really poor quality. So I bought myself a new webcam that will hopefully help with that. And yeah, other than that, we're all just ticking along. Um, just waiting, waiting for the world to open back up. So thank goodness we have knitting to keep us busy in the meantime. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry it's been a whole month. I will um, try and do better. <laughs> Maybe if the kids go back to school, I'll have a bit more peace and quiet to get these things done. I hope you're well as well. Do leave me a comment down below. Check the drop down box for all the details of the things that I have talked about. Please do give me a thumbs up and click subscribe. Um, it just helps get my podcast out there and helps other people find me. And I'll see you soon. Bye.